it's Hope, and today I have my July wrap-up. I have not been active on booktube for the past week because I've been in Colorado, and I didn't have any internet service, but it was really fun, and I hiked a mountain, and I have a lot of battle scars from that. <laughs> I was just so much fun. Um, I got um, less reading than I wanted to get done, done out there, but um, it was just so great being um, removed from uh, civilization for a week and just being in this purely natural environment. I'm going to get on with my wrap up now. So the first book I read in July was Magonia by Maria Devana Headley. This book is about a girl named Aza who um, has a lot of breathing problems, but the doctors that she's been to can't put a name to her breathing disorder, so she's just living with this horrible disease and they don't know how to cure it, they don't know how much time she has left, so um, there have been like a lot of weird things that have been happening to her, like she can hear these weird bird-like voices calling her name sometimes and she's like what the heck like this must be a hallucination side effect of the medicine she just doesn't know um she does have a best friend in her life who makes this disease um a bit more bearable and his name is jason he is such a great character he's just so kind and thoughtful and creative and i love jason's character um his story is told in dual perspective from Oz's perspective and Jason's perspective and um it's very interesting because Aza just knows so much that Jason doesn't know because of um the thing that happens that um I, I guess this wouldn't be a spoiler she um is part of this race of people who live in the sky um so that's kind of like the main magical realism part of the story and Jason doesn't know this until um, he does a bunch of research because he's like this research fanatic and he like um, re realizes that um, like Oz has told him that she's heard voices and all these birds come to her all the time like she's seen like ropes hanging down from the sky because of the ships that are in the sky that she goes to live on so um, Jason realizes that she is part of this race and that's where she's gone. She didn't really die, but she's up there in the sky living with these um, sky people. So, yeah, it's a really, really good story. And um, I like the message that kind of comes along with it. Like, you might be offered a position of power, but it's not worth it if it's going to harm other people. The next book I read in July was Paper Towns by John Green. Uh, I did tab, like, one thing. What, what is this? What a treacherous thing it is to believe that a person is more than a person. That's a good quote. Um, anyway, this book was really good. This is probably my favorite John Green book, um, Coming After the Fault in Our Stars. I've read three John Green books, The Fault in Our Stars, Paper Towns, and Looking for Alaska, and I didn't like Looking for Alaska as much as I, as I thought I would, but um, it was still good. But um, Paper Towns is um, probably a lighter read than The Fault in Our Stars and Looking for Alaska, because no one dies, but um, it's just such a good book. It follows a boy named, what's his name, Quentin, who um, kind of has a an ordinary life pretty much it's an ordinary kid doesn't really do anything to get into trouble um he has a couple of friends who are nerdy like he is and um he has this next door neighbor named margot roth spiegelman and she is like this icon at school because she goes on all these adventures she's just um totally brave and outgoing um and that's kind of like a facade that she puts on for everyone else. And then um, she just appears one day after she does all this stuff with Quentin one night because she wants to like seek revenge on a bunch of friends who are mean to her. So she um, enlists Quentin to help her. And then the next day she's gone and no one knows where she is. And her parents aren't really that worried because she's done this before. So they're assuming that she'll come back. But um, this time it just seems different to Quentin because normally... 
um, Margot leaves clues for her parents to find her, but this time she it appears to be that she's left clues um, for Quentin to find her. So it's just a story about how Quentin and his friends go to find Margot, and it's just, it's really good. I think, um, a lot of issues with, like, suburbia are addressed in this story, how, um, suburban life can just become so ordinary and mundane, it's like, you feel oppressed by it at times, so, yeah, um, yeah, I, I really like this book. I gave it four out of five stars. Next book I read this month was Marina by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Um, this book was so good. I liked it so much. Um, I did tab two things. Um, what's this? All that is left of us are our actions, the good or the evil we do to our fellow humans. And the territory of humans is life, said the doctor. Death does not belong to us. So yeah, this book is just so good. It, um, follows a boarding student in Spain, um, a boarding school student, yeah, a boarding school student in Spain named, um, God, what's his name? Oscar. And, um, I think he's a freshman, like 14 years old. And he, um, he's just really tired of his boarding school, so he, like, goes exploring one day and he finds... On um, this ancient gothic house and this girl named Marina lives in the house and she's I believe she's a year older than him and she lives with her and she lives with her um very I mean her father is ill I guess yeah her father's ill and she lives with him and god her father is such, such a great person and Marina is such a great person and um her and Oscar go on all these adventures together well not really <laughs> they're just kind of working like to solve this mystery and um Basically, it's like, um, they find these puppet things, and the puppets come to life, like, like, um, kind of like Frankenstein. As themes are very similar to Frankenstein, like, um, how far should science go? Um, obviously, would you want the dead to be revived? I personally wouldn't, no matter what. Um, because they're not going to be the same. And, um, it just deals with, um, science going too far. Friendship. Friendship is such a huge theme in this book. Like, Marina and Oscar's friendship is so fantastic. And it's just such a great book. And the cover's beautiful. I think I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I highly recommend this book. The next book I read was More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. It was just, it was so good. This book was um, in the June Owl Crate. And it follows a boy named, God, oh, Aaron, Aaron. Um... Yeah, it follows a boy named Aaron, and um, he realizes that he is gay, and he doesn't really know what to do about it because all of his friends are, like really homophobic, and he knows that like he'll probably um, get hurt in many different ways, emotional and physical, if he admits to his community that he's gay, um, and he has a girlfriend, so it's like really hard for him to deal with all these confusing feelings. Um, and then, like, he goes to this institute, like, it's a new, um, institute called the Lateo Institute, and they, um, kind of erase certain memories so he could forget that he's gay. Um, so he goes to do that, and just a lot of things happen. And then he meets, like, this other boy named Thomas, and Thomas is, like, so sweet, but, um, we don't really know until if, um, Thomas is, like, um, feeling the same feelings, um, as, um, Aaron is until the end and it's just so great and the plot twist like I did not even expect there to be a plot twist twist but there was like a huge plot twist that I was not expecting at all and I just thought that this book dealt with um the issues of homophobia so yeah I thought that that issue was dealt with very well in this book it wasn't over explained it didn't feel um too drawn out so, um, yeah, it was just such a great book. I would highly recommend it. The next book I read in July was Hyperbole and a Half by Allie Brosh. And this is kind of like, like, it's a graphic biography, kind of, kind of like biography memoir. Um, this girl, Allie Brosh, is a blogger. Um, I personally don't really visit her blog that often, but... Sorry, I'm out of breath. I, like, had to climb up and down my stairs to get, um, <laughs> my books. <laughs> but, um, anyway, 
Um, this book is just so funny. Like, not a lot of books make me actually laugh. Like physically laugh and maybe in my head I'll think oh that's that's humorous it was clever but like this book actually made me laugh out loud like to the point where I was almost in tears like it's just so funny but the thing is like it's not all just like humor like there's a large section of this book like not large but like it's larger compared to the other sections of um and kind of stories that Allie tells about her life, but it, there's a section on um, her depression, and I thought that she explained depression very well, and she articulated how she um, felt while she was dealing with depression and while she's still dealing with depression um, very well, and um, she really just put it in her in her own words, and I've never like heard depression being described like how she describes it, and. I just think it's really important that, um, like, she didn't romanticize it at all. Like, I feel like people romanticize sadness a lot, and I don't, I personally don't think that that's a good thing to romanticize sadness, especially, um, extreme points of sadness, but she really just tells it how it is. She doesn't, um, glamorize it or anything like that, and I just thought that that was really, really great. So I gave this book five out of five stars. It's just such a great book, um... I'll probably reread it soon because it's just so funny. Like, whenever um, I feel sad, like, I'll just reread it because it's, it's so funny. And the next book um, I read was The Giver by Lois Lowry. Yeah, I I never read this before, and um, it's a really, really short read. I think it's, like, 220 pages, something like that. And um, it's about this dystopian society, um, and I think this is, like, one of the first dystopian books that really got really popular so that's why it's so renowned the this book follows a character named jonas and it's like the society where there's like no color there's literally no color like the scientists did something to make the color all go away and like children like they make children stop feeling like sexual feelings like when you when they reach puberty and they start to feel those feelings like they give the children pills so they don't feel the feelings um and then, like, the families are set up very strangely. Like, a man is matched to a woman and vice versa. And, um, like, they're given children. Like, they don't have the children themselves. Like, there are certain people. Like, like people are given jobs, right? So, there are certain women who are designated to become, like, I forgot what they're called, but they're designated to have babies. And um, these babies are, like, given to these couples it's like the couples don't have them themselves um so yeah and the couples can only have up to two kids i believe i think it has to be a boy and a girl i'm i'm pretty sure it can't be a boy and a boy or a girl and a girl i'm not sure um but god it's just so it was really good um i don't think i'm gonna read the sequel because i was pretty I was satisfied with the open ending just knowing that Jonas got away from it all kind of um so yeah I, I just think the message is really important like would you sacrifice um creativity and color and feelings the like true feelings um in order for there to be you know essentially no fighting and no um prejudice and um no violence and I think that's a really important question um so yeah this is this is a pretty good book I gave it four out of five stars